Any man, any game. One-on-one -on -one poker and $500,000 just to sit down. This is the challenge that Tom Dwan has issued to the world. Welcome to the Full Tilt Poker Durr Million Dollar Challenge. Welcome to London's Les Ambassadors Casino for one of the biggest heads-up events, the Full Tilt Poker Durr Million Dollar Challenge. The poker sensation Tom Dwan will take on three of the world's greatest cash game players. When the cards go in the air, we find out if anyone can beat Tom Dwan. Known as Durr, this 23-year-old started with nothing and has built an empire. I convinced my parents to throw $50 online on my Paradise Poker account and never look back. He has won record pots of over $1.1 million. You need to be confident in your game. You need to be able to bluff and lose a big pot or make a big call and be wrong and just move on to the next hand and get over it. He has an impressive resume, which includes caches in the WSOP, EPT, and Premier League. I had a nickname for you. You know what it was? <laughs> what was it? Duracell. You keep raising and raising and raising and raising. In 2009, Durr issued a heads up challenge. Heads up poker is definitely my favorite form of poker. You're going to need to always play a lot of hands. You're going to need to always be thinking. His opponents are London businessman Sammy and two George. There's no better feeling than walking in with 150,000 or walking out with half a million. Italian high stakes player Marcello. Every time you play with a good player, you can learn something. Even if you lose money, maybe it's, a, uh, it's almost like you buy something. And finish pro Zigby. Of course, it's a lot of money, but it's more for me winning. It's not only money. I would always rather end up with the money. I don't care if I get lucky or play well to get there but it's most likely that you end up with the money if you play well. Tonight, the challenge begins as Sammy Any 2 George takes on Durr in a bid for half a million dollars. I can't believe I'm playing Tom Dwan. You're so sick in the head. Let me study what you do here. I won't play this hand even when I feel it. Both at it. Oh, good news. Now we're talking Sammy talk. I think it'd be an awesome, awesome game. I'm sure your body looks nicer naked than mine. All right. <laughs> what a cooler. I just suck at math. I hate that. I'm thrilled to be joined for analysis throughout this match by numbers one and two in British poker, Roland DeWolf and Neil Channing. Now guys, Sammy George, how tough an opponent is this going to be? Well, this is going to be super interesting to see, firstly, what Sammy turns up, because Sammy's A game is pretty good. You know, he's a guy, he's a business guy, he's learned poker in the last couple of years, but he's, he's a hell of a guy. He's a bundle of enthusiasm with an infectious personality who started out uh, wanting to play against very good players right from the start and he's got a big heart and learning but he was very very much overmatched when he first learned but he's got a lot better but sometimes he still slips back into very very poor play but sometimes he plays great so it just depends which Sammy George we see today. A lot of people have been most excited about this match because uh, Sammy George was the first guy to really stand up and say I'll take on Durr. Maybe I'm an underdog, maybe I'm not. He was the only guy in the UK to do it and you gotta respect him for that. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, Sammy's pretty amazing, really. I mean, he's probably been playing poker about three years. He started playing one pound, two pound limits. Uh, and now he's gonna be playing against Durr, you know, possibly the world's greatest player. Certainly, uh, I think, unarguably the greatest online player. Uh, and certainly one of the greatest poker players in the world. And fair play to him, you know, he's standing up there and being counted. He's also a guy, you feel like, this is the biggest poker moment he's ever had, and he knows it. He wants it. I mean, there's something to be said for that. He's, de he's definitely going to be hungry for this game. It's a big stage for him. He doesn't want to get embarrassed. He's been thinking about it and talking about it forever. And, and you know, fair play, he stood up, and a lot of people have shied away from him. And he said, look, I'm going to do it. And some people are like thinking that this could be a real killing, a real mismatch, and people are, some people have come to see a slaughter. It might turn out that way, but it might not. Sammy could, Sammy could win, you know, he, he can beat, he can beat Dirt if the cards go his way. Yeah, I mean, at the end of the day, they're playing No Limit Hold'em. There was some talk about them playing Pot Limit Omaha. Most people that spoke to Sammy that like him said, you should play No Limit Hold'em. 
Uh, if you think about some of the heavyweight boxing matches over the years, the, the other guy, the underdog guy, he's always got a puncher's chance. And I think in No Limit Hold'em, you can just land one lucky blow. I'm not saying that Sammy needs to be like super, super, super lucky to win. He's probably not even worse than a 33% chance of winning this, but he's gonna have to play good and probably be a bit lucky. No way. <laughs> Thrilled to be joined throughout yeah. this match by Isaac Haxton, known as Love the WNBA Online. And you know a bit about Tom Dwan. You've played him. Yeah, I've played quite a few hands heads up with Brace. Tom and Bring some more in ring games. And this match, I mean, exciting sort of match because this is kind of what's going on in poker these days. Heads up, deep stack. Yeah, I think it's just the okay. most exciting format of poker, bar none. Okay. Deep stack, heads up, all of it. I believe you. If you had to we sort of... flip just to get it over with. No. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, we didn't want to flip for 500k, but we both like just were playing terrible and wanted to get it over with. Sick. Absolutely sick. He, um, Not as crazy as it sounds. The players crazy, would actually right? just yeah, yeah, gamble yeah. sometimes for large, huge amounts online. A flip thing. Oh, play. yeah. Cool. Some of the Chinese poker action I've seen with these sorts of guys. Million dollars can change hands in a couple minutes. Well, into the game now, and it's a raise on the button from Sammy, and he's flopped huge here. The royal flush draw. Cut. Tom's led it for Check. five, and Check. I mean Sammy's. Played this quite weak, hasn't he? Is he opening himself up to sort of a bluff on the river now? Well, only if he folds to it. He's missed his clubs, he's missed his overcards, he's missed. Yeah, I wonder what Tom's thinking about doing here. I mean, it, it makes sense to be bluffing now, doesn't it, for Tom? We're putting in a bet. And it does. Forty-three thousand. That is not a small bet at all. That's <laughs> two and a half times the pot or so. Making a little bit of a statement here, I think. I mean, it's, it's massive. It's um. How much? Forty-three. Forty-three. Sammy really thinking about calling this? It's um. Is is it such a big bet that it's it has to be a huge hand or nothing or? You would think so, though. If if Sammy's gonna call with a side, then Tom can do it with a jack. I mean, thank you. A massive call from Sammy George yeah, that, early. That is a big call. He is here to play. For Tom. The early path. <coughs> I mean, if you had to characterize sort of Tom Dwan's oh. style. King eight. <laughs> uh -huh. <laughs> He's a really fearless sort of guy. Oh, sorry. Yeah, fine. A lot of different ways. Fearless in the sense of he's willing to make big bluffs, big call downs, and also, you know, he's willing to play anybody. He's willing to win and lose gigantic sums of money. He's just a really Price. gutsy Price. poker player. So a great start to the match and sort of an indication that uh, these guys are going to be willing to get the money in with or without a hand. Oh, yeah, I think we're going to see some action here. Sammy peeling off the flop here. Check. 5,000. And is this kind of an automatic sort of continuation bet for Tom? That's what we're going to be seeing. Yeah, I think he'll be betting often here with any two overguards to that board. That's not a good card for Tom to continue bluffing here. I think he's likely to check back. It can give Sammy trip tens, and it also check. improves his second and third pair hands because they now lose to fewer hands than they did on the flop. And Tom River stop pair. Check. Automatic value bet. 
I would think so. You would have to be very worried that your opponent was checking trip tens or some sort of flopped monster to consider not betting here. 13,000. I hate that. Wow, and a quick pass from Sammy, sort of perhaps indicative that he doesn't think Tom's going to be doing much bluffing. I, I guess in that spot specifically, maybe. He certainly uh, was giving Tom some credit for being able to bluff when he made that ace king call. It is going to be a long, long match. And I, I guess, like, the first Nothing few less. hands, really a feeling oh, out stage. I mean, how do you begin no. a heads up match? Tight? Usually not. Um, I tend not to play very tight at any point of a heads up match. I think it's important to really be contesting the small pots. Ooh. As Tom is doing here, he's re raising with Jack 7 suited, hoping to pick it up either pre flop or maybe with a better flop. Wow, he is re raising. Be a re -raise. And obviously, the problem with that, right, you're, you're kind of. I, d I don't love re-raising that hand. Re-raising a weaker hand to bluff, I think, is a good play. Re-raising a stronger hand for value, I think, is a good play. Hey, the ace-jack there, when Tom gives him action, it's almost one. always going to be with, like, a slightly better hand. He's one setting himself up to Massive play a pot there. against ace-king, ace-queen, ace ace queen, no, medium to big pairs. My hands are tiny. I can't get to the chips. There we go. The positive That's thing, though, is that uh, Sammy... So far, right. taking a very That's aggressive action. Stand out to play flop yeah. raise. Okie dokie. Let's rock. The, the spear so in this match. That's awesome. <laughs> oh, already my buddy. sort of the tone set that it's going to be, <laughs> even though contested, friendly. These guys okay. are both gentlemen okay. poker players. Five Absolutely. If I had just one heart in my hand, I'd call. Even if it's the deuce. That's something I love about high stakes poker is that players are mostly very civil with each other. There's a very sort of sporting, friendly, competitive, but right. you know, there's a certain camaraderie that comes with gambling for these stakes. Right. People get along for the most part. And uh, these stakes are, of course, this. These stakes here are pretty much about as big as our played in poker today. This is about as yeah. big as it gets. Yeah, it, it is not often oh. that you see a heads-up game or really any sort of game for stakes bigger than this. 501k blinds, 250 we big blind stacks. They're, they're going to play a half-million-dollar pot Nothing sometime wrong. pretty soon. Three bet from Sammy. Nothing Call else. in position from Durr. Oh, man. Are we going to be seeing him do a lot of that tonight? Time. I think so. In my experience Bet. playing with him and seeing him play against other pass. players, he does not like folding the three bets, Ooh, especially yeah. when he's in Whoop. position. Oh, yeah, that hand yesterday was with Marcus, with Ronald. <laughs> I, had, four. I had four nine of spades, <laughs> and the flop came, uh, like, I think ten, no, ace, four, six. <laughs> and then Already he bet, like, time fat court. I hit the nine on the turn. Yeah. And I said to Erica, before the nine came on the turn, I said to Erica, today. listen, I said to Erica, look, this is a, a, a Duani hand. That's just uber wrong. <laughs> uber wrong. I've right. sort of been noticing that these guys obviously very good friends. About and on that one, huh? Sammy has sort of <laughs> taken on this the lingo. He's yeah. Everything is uber <laughs> sick and... <laughs> How, how tough is it to play these small players heads up? Well, small pairs are pretty strong hands in general, heads up, but when you're in a spot like this where there's a pair and another card larger than your pocket pair on board, it's really difficult to play your hand because every card in the deck is so bad for you. You know, the six turns now and then on the river, <laughs> any a six or a ten counterfeits Sammy's hand and he plays the board, and any card seven through queen or so is bad. Pretty good for Tom and pretty bad for Sammy. Such a group ball. <laughs> no. Hey, he's gotten away from it. I would have bet the river after that move. Although I would have bet the river before that move also. That was the, what I had in my head, I mind. It's like, if I call that, what am I prepared to call on the river? 15 all in or what? And Sammy's got the right idea here. It 
Or something Tom like seems that. seems to have made it clear that if Sammy plays oh, passively, totally to Tom's totally going to my phone. make a lot of big bets. Okay, let me Sammy study what you do here. 3,000 standard? Okay. 3,000 total. Right, let's see. A flop. <laughs> and yet, uh, there is sort of uh, a theory that sometimes you sort of revert to passive play and defensive play at certain points in a match? I mean, definitely. Um, okay. I think that just calling with that hand is a perfectly good play. Check, check on the flop. Sammy check. now with the second check. nuts, anyway. Sammy has to be very confident he has the best hand here. And really? what what sort of decision is this right now for Durr? Well, what's the sizing of this bet here? That, that's a big bet. <laughs> it's like triple pot. Yeah, just about. Uh, for a pot size bet, he would have had a really tough decision. It, 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 it's hard to call against that bet, I think. Though, at the same time, how often is he going to have better than a king there? there. Is, <laughs> he, is he just going <laughs> to give up the pot every time Sam makes a big bet? Yeah, bro, it'd be so much fun. What? That's sort of like the so patterns are now being uh, set for later, is that what you see? Absolutely, yeah. Just look at some of the new stats we'll be tracking in this match. Total aggression is a ratio of how often a player bets or raises versus calling. Right, and what you can see from these numbers is that Durr is playing more aggressively than Sammy, which is not necessarily a good or bad thing. It's just that Tom, when he's playing a big pot, more often has the lead, and Sammy is getting to the river, facing a big bet, and having to guess if he should call or fold. Tom Durdwan and Sammy Any2 George have struck up an unusual friendship over the past few months. The first time I met him, he was coming out of a toilet. I said hello to him. He didn't know who I was. Um, then I turned around and I said, you know I'm Sammy George. I'm going to be playing you in, your, in the challenge. He said, oh, hi, nice to meet you. Uh, he went. I think he probably forgot straight after that, you know rushing to the room to play his tournament. I didn't know anything about him, and now I consider him a pretty good friend. He's a very cool guy. Um, I've spent a bunch of time with him in the last two months since I've been in London a lot. When he came over for the World Series of Poker Europe, we were playing a lot of big games here, a lot of big games, and we built a very good relationship. You know, we were together every other day. You know, we were playing here, playing there. We were going bowling quite a bit. We, you know, playing loads of games together, you know? A lot of, a lot of, uh, a lot of bets were laid while he was here. I've watched him win all the money in a bunch of the games because he's done really well in the last few months. And uh, I hope that that keeps going but has a one day halt in it as hopefully I win something from him today. As people go, I think he's the most um, honest, respectable man that I've met in this game. Still to come tonight, the two friends clash at the belt. Let's put a lot of tension in the back of my head. Food is the main topic of the night. Got to get the black tail of miso. Yes. Get them in the lettuce wrap. Yes. Got to get the yellow tail jalapeno. Yeah, yeah, of course. Rock shrimp. And Sammy struggles to focus on the game. I'm on TV at the moment while I'm talking to you. Join us for more action after the break. I'm going to go 10K in the middle and just do it in one go. Welcome back. Isaac Haxton and myself here at the Durr Million Dollar Challenge. Like Miller, She's taking on Sammy played, uh, George. Chinese Half a million yeah, dollars or more. She was saying, and she said, um, so far, Sammy seems to be accommodating himself quite well, Isaac. She said, uh, yeah, Sammy seems to be America. playing well. He's she said, uh, she making was good dealing, decisions yeah, yeah, yeah. in tough spots. She said she was dealing in you. Uh, Another three bets. It was bet funny that you were doing it in, like, in the restaurant. From Durr. It was crazy. Yeah, it was upstairs. Sammy makes a little bit of a loose call with Queen Two suited there. The size of the three bet just seems to be both players about eleven thousand, slightly more than the opening raise, if you know what I mean, as far as the size of the bet. Is that traditional? Right. Yeah, that's pretty typical the for like the big front. blind to re raise to anywhere the same from ones. three times the open to four <laughs> times the Double open. fish goes. Double fish goes. Any smaller and it's just too easy plays, to call, if any bigger and you're Sigmund, laying if he plays the bigger again, price to get the good hand. Because Sigmund, because he told Ziggy, Ziggy done a bunch in Chinese. Lost a bunch, yeah. Lost a bunch in yeah. Chinese, yeah. Of course, because I'm big. <laughs> There's a, a lot of right. people sort of, you can see in the background, Sammy, this is almost his home turf, you know, so he's got a lot of friends around, and mm -hmm. he was uh, quite excited about this, Sammy. Yeah. 
I mean, you generally think uh, there must be times in your career when you sort of have, uh, I don't want to say you, you take a chance because you know you're going to be learning a lot at the same time as. Uh, Absolutely. First time I played big heads up with Tom two or three years ago was definitely just such an occasion, actually. <laughs> and how pumped up were you for that match? It was a lot of fun. Uh, we'd been playing in, I believe, a 5100 cap game online, and Tom had been losing a lot, was kind of angry and tilted and challenged me to a heads up game. And I decided to take him up on it. If I remember correctly, it went pretty well. I ended up making 50,000 or so. <sighs> And was that the the first time sort of playing Tom heads up? Were you prepared for the game? I mean, were you prepared for what he had to offer? All in, cool. I think so. I've been in. playing a lot what? of heads up no limit already by <laughs> yeah, that like point. Myself. He was certainly one of the tougher players I'd played Raised before. Raised 3,000 total. Raised to 11,000 total. Throwing chips like they're nothing. Did you not know that there's a recession? <laughs> Now, last time was the first time that we had I'm seen Tom to back, sort of re-raise pre-flop and then check the flop. Four, and he's, he's doing this so often, this three bet. That yeah, he really is. Is he going to have to be mixing up this sort of check uh, on the flop in? I mean, uh, I would think so. It depends on how often Sammy calls. If Durr is re-raising a whole lot, but Sammy's calling even wider than that, then Durr can just keep betting these flops. But if you know, once Dirk has re-raised and Sammy's greener. called, Sammy tends to have the stronger okay. hand, then yes, Tom's going to have to be <laughs> checking a lot more often. You're so sick in the head. It's true, bro. Ridiculous. And he's called Dapper Dry Cleaner as well. As if he's bloody good. And he's not too dapper? He's not too dapper at all, man. I saw the mark. How are your cars over there? Are they dapper? Uh, I'll be honest with you. I can't They're call They're not too dapper either? Have, no. No. No, I actually was going to repop your puppy. And I don't know if this is a tr 100. <laughs> yeah. 100. A trend we'll be seeing, but if Sam nice does peel off a lot of flops for the button, the three bet, he has to start nice. doing stuff like floating and raising with nothing. Is that something you have to Absolutely. do? Absolutely. That was something I was about to say, was that total. if Sammy's going to be playing loose to the three bet, then when a flop comes like 6-6-4, six, six, neither player is going to have a pair of very often. And if Dirk can just bet win on boards like that, like he's going to be making a lot of money he's by losing. building these big pots pre-flop and then stealing them on the flop. Big Check. flop for Sammy. Yep. Check. Not a very big flop at all for Dur. We'll have to see if Sammy manages to get any of his money here. Checks it back. Now Dur has a big draw. He's got the double gut shot and the queen high flush draw. Raised. Yeah, he's not even that far behind. It says 32% right there. And should Dur know how many outs he has here? I mean, is the queen of spades kind of... Uh, it's hard to say. Um, you can't really be, can't really be so certain weird. that any one of his outs is live, but between the straight outs myself. and the flush outs, Sammy would it's have to have a big flush for Tom not hand. to have a lot of outs. What was that? That is a really big fold. Two gut shots on a flush draw. Two gut shots? In the, you folded two gut shots. In, you folded two gut shots on a flush draw? Yes. No, you never. Yeah, I'm just as shocked as Sammy there. Tom's a fold of that. And, and, and Tom Ford there thinking about he's not really sure what he wants to see and if he can call a big river bet there. Exactly. It's a tricky spot because none of his outs are to the nuts. And there's even some chance that he's drawing dead already if Sammy has a king or, queen, no, king or ace high flush. Woke up in literally like worst excruciating pain in my life. Like worse than, you know, punch in the face. Baseball, yeah, one yeah, half of course, the it's horrible. Like it's crazy. the worst part. It's the worst. worse than like any teeth thing. Um, just like scream. I was just like screaming at the top of my lungs, like, oh, what the? Yeah, of course, man. Because like I had no idea what it was. I didn't know. You know, you know what I mean? You know that's the worst pain. I think he's talking that's, about those that's cramps like the worst, that you worst get. Pain. <laughs> <laughs> right. I get it all the time. <laughs> But I mean, fat. like, I've had obviously, oh. you know, had some rando bad cramp before. But yeah, this yeah, was yeah. like. I, I literally like couldn't, and I was six tabling at the time. Yeah. 
So, so I just sat there spewing like, ah, and then I was like, click, 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 and then just like chucked my computer. No. But did, um, did you get, did you get massage? Yeah, yeah, yeah. She like woke up and did that and it felt better. Well, you need to, you need to like put your leg back like that. That's what all the footballers do. Ask Eddie. Okay, I'll lay out, I'll lay out a little bit. Okay, Five please. Thousand. Well, there is a little putt going on, but Sammy Betson takes it. I mean, okay. Durr has been. Yeah. I mean, it's like sore today. Oh, it would be. It would be. Listen, it's the yesterday worst. Yesterday was, it was I so cry sorry. when I get it. I, 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 I like, like a bitch, I cry. I'm, I'm like on the floor, you know, squealing like a pig, like oink, like, oink. If I had that once a day for, for 30 minutes, I would just instantly just find the highest place to jump off of. And then, I mean, it was terrible. It was, but the best, for, the best feeling, just take pain the best feeling is when it goes. <laughs> Is the relief when it goes. Right, that's, right, right. that's the feeling you need. That's that's the one. There you go, bro. It was so sick though, while six table. Like luckily I wasn't in any big hands. You know, yeah. I was in like a bunch of smaller yeah, ones. Yeah, because you're in I... the same position. That's what it is, and the blood stops circulating. Maybe, yeah. Yeah. No. That's why you're gonna get the crap off foot. Sand it. He has been keeping up a very sort of intense yeah. schedule um, yeah. lately, Tom has been playing no, these matches, heads up matches of the day and sort of one line all night. Jake. Yeah, there's this 5, crazy action going online right now with a unknown player oh. by the screen name of Isildur, who Tom has been playing quite a bit with. Hasn't gone so well for him thus far. Which just seems to make him want to put in even more Check. hours for <laughs> the guy. Meanwhile, now Sammy with the full house going for uh, it looks like the big bet on the river. And well, it's really to seen me, any of these I'll tell you the big worst. over that cold well, it's so far. In the shower. Yeah, and how no cramped in the shower and you're butt naked and change. you can't come out. What'd you do then? Funny I mean, you. I wouldn't care. If, like, that cramp, I would definitely have come out. I, w I wouldn't care. Like, you know, making running around the house like naked. Bar. Yeah, but you're, you're, you, you've got, like, I'm, I'm sure your body looks nicer naked than mine, but the point is, you know, the last thing you want to see is a, is a 120 kilo geezer running around the house <laughs> with a cramp in his left leg. <laughs> <laughs> it just doesn't look right. And then you want, and then you want something. <laughs> you know what Thank I mean? That. <laughs> you know? It just, you just don't want to be involved in it, to be honest. I'm scared the crap out of anyone going through around. Was it? Yeah, I think so. Huh? He seems to have gotten a perfectly nice hand anyhow. Okay. What do I do here? Actually, okay. We were talking about those over bets on the, Just the river. Just to see the And you're saying Isildur. And um, actually, I think more. it seems no, to be something that, that this yes, Isildur, and that is becoming more common in the poker 100%. world, is these big over bets on the river in this game. Definitely. And heads up, Nolan, that there are a lot of good opportunities to over bet. There are a lot of situations where Diamond. your opponent will almost never have a very strong hand, and you often will. And you can put him to a really tough decision by consistently in those Too spots bad. making huge bets, both with the hands that you can never beat and with the Oh, well, I guess I should have bet the turn then. <laughs> yes. <laughs> And it feels like a way that No Limit Hold'em has really changed over maybe the past well, couple of years. We've got to get some sushi. Right, right, right. Obviously. What's coming oh, more into the game? Or, yeah, you know, yeah. Okay. There's been there more than recently. Okay, okay you order main, I order appetizer. Before, but Deal? It, it's sure. been around Could forever. I mean, Doyle talks about overbetting in Super oh, yeah. System. For nine. Prahlad Friedman oh, was deuce. really famous for his overbets. We should play if you win with seven dudes, you get ten crushing bet. the big online games in okay, 2005. Yeah, yeah, done. Right. You need to win with it. So if I, yeah, if, bet. if you fold and I have seven dudes in the big blind, I win ten k. No. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Anytime you have it. No, you've got to raise me. No, it's got to be just to set seven it out. If you get seven dudes, which is and you raise and I raise, it's got to be like that. If I see if I get a crap out of my fold. And you have seven what about Riz and game? you fold the big one? Yeah, that's fine. Cash games. That's cool. Really then then it's 10 grand. The game by making it really correct. Oh, no, 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 no. It's 10K. No, so say I raise. Hand. Now, say I, have, I raise 3K. You raise me. And then I fold and you show seven dudes. That's 10K. Okay. Yeah, yeah? So it only doesn't count if it's... Yeah, but if, if you... If, if you I fold and I'm in the big one. Yeah, like, exactly. Okay. All right, done. Oh, man, it's such a fun sweat, though, if you fold. No! Then I get to look down and be like, come on, one time. No, 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 I can't. I can't. 
players are going to be due for a break. Hey, I'll be back seven out deuces to check in with Neil two, and three. Roland. Well, the seven deuce is going to come into play tonight. I've seen you play the seven deuce before. It's an interesting game that adds to the dynamic of people might be bluffing, so people are more likely to call. I haven't really played it much in a heads-up game. I've played it in a ring game. And you do see big pots created and a lot more calls down because no one wants to see someone get through with a seven deuce. But in a heads-up dynamic where a lot of pots are uh, uncontested, uh, that could change the way that people defend the blinds. And that might work in Durr's favour to get Sammy playing out of position, which is something he really shouldn't do. Yeah, it's interesting because obviously heads up, no limit hold'em, most times no one's really got anything. You know, you're not really going to get ace king or two queens too often. So a lot of the time people are raising with nine three and the other guy calls with ten eight and stuff like that. So you don't really need to do this thing that's going to make people bluff more often because basically whenever you've got the button, you're going to bluff most of the time anyway. But uh, the seven deuce can really get the action going. And Sammy loves it actually. It's a thing that kind of distracts him. And that's probably why Durs suggested it because anything you can do, can think about 20 things at the same time. He's probably thinking about where he's going next week, his travel plans, what his girlfriend's up to while he's playing. Sammy's like, as soon as you mention something to Sammy, his brain leaps off in all directions and he can't concentrate on playing cards anymore. So it'd be interesting to see whether he loses focus from what he's really here to do, which is to win all of that money off of dirt. Because, I mean, to really affect the strategy, how much would that seven deuce have to be worth in this game? More than 10k, certainly. Yeah, I think I think more than ten big blinds, maybe maybe thirty thirty big blinds or something like that. I think because it won't come up that often, and that would be a large enough amount. But just for five or ten k, people are just gonna just gonna pay it and let it go. I mean, you could see someone get involved in a big pot with it, but you know the chances of it happening are uh, rare. It's still just two seven. There is still plenty more action to come. Sammy and E2 is put under pressure as these two friends battled out for a million dollars. I don't know if I'm talking crap on the panel. I'll play this hand even when I feel it. When we get up and say goodbye, then it's back. The Full Tilt Poker Durr Million Dollar Challenge continues after the break. Welcome back. We're eyes we should play eight to three. myself. Watching the Full Tilt Poker Durr Million Dollar Challenge. Raised Seven 3, deuce game now on for 10K. Roland and Neil don't think it's gonna affect things. Well, I think it's gonna encourage both sides to make sure they try to win the pot when they get dealt seven deuce. But some, from sort of a defensive standpoint, I don't think either player should really be doing anything too differently to counteract it. You just don't get dealt seven deuce often enough for it to matter that much in a heads up game. Check. And this a three bet from Durr and now checking the flop. Checking to call? Probably not. It's such a coordinated board. There's so many bad cards for him. I, I don't know what his plan would be if he were to call here. He's having a good think about it. He is check raise I used to watch you on TV that you could take here ever? You could, if for some reason you really thought that Sammy was specifically going to bet and then fold with a hand like the one he has, bottom pair or second pair. There just aren't that many hands that are ahead of ace jack that are going to fold to further action on this board. But there he goes. I wonder if he How much? somehow has the impression that Sammy is, has the hand he has and is going to fold it. Or if he thinks that maybe Sammy will call once with a queen, but will not go all the way to showdown if he's playing okay, a really big then? bluff here. Can I have a count, please? Okay. Yeah, to take this line. 125. Is his information... 125. After the 40, so the total is what? Size, 124. Is about three quarters okay. of pot. What, over there? Plus that this, or...? It. No, plus that's that. not included. Sammy that. has tended to get... Okay. Plus that, it's 124. Size one. of the pot, he has a very strong hand. So Tom may have the impression that he's very likely to have bottom or middle pair. 124 on top, so it's one... What? Seven, He's asked her for a count. I mean, it's, it's a lot of money here. Yeah, there's a 124 behind, which means that if Sammy were to call here, Durr would have just over the size of the pot left to play on the turn, which is a perfect amount to shove if he happens to turn something like a 9 or a 10 to give him a gut shot. 10 actually gives him a double gut shot. Obviously, if the cards are face up, Sammy shoves, but it's a... It's either a very rash play or ridiculously strong, right? 
yeah, um, he has shown some stubbornness when the pots have gotten big. He did make that huge call against Tom's overbet to start things off. He's obviously suspicious, and is it because he's obviously the nervous, too? You can tell he doesn't have a set. He's pulled off his sunglasses Bye. and he's chewing on them. He, he's almost... He can't call now, because Tom will know exactly what he has. If he, he wants to continue, he's just going to have to end the pot. So let's see. Let's he's definitely this. hurt himself by being so obviously distressed. A quarter of a stack. Which means... Through the up and down. Oh. Got queen. Jack. Mm. And it looks like Tom has gotten away with his first big bluff of the match, and he's going to show just Queen the Jack. jack. Yep. Poker sensation Tom Dwan has had an incredible career so far. The 23-year-old began with only $50 in his online poker account. I grew up in Edison, New Jersey for the first 18 years of my life. It's a town in north central Jersey, about 45 minutes to an hour from the city. When I was younger, I was pretty into sports, mainly basketball. And I also was always fairly into card games. I played Pinochle and Spades and Hearts with my parents a bit. And I had also played, you know, little random poker games like Deuces Wild kind of things with my family uh, as a kid. Halfway through my senior year of high school, I think I saw World Poker Tour on TV and then the next night, or maybe that night, played a $5 little sit and go tournament with one of my friends, Sam Pinella, my parents, and my aunt and uncle, and enjoyed it, and then watched Poker on TV a little more in the following days. There was a day where we were gonna go either to a movie or something like that, or I, I don't remember exactly what the plans were, but it got canceled because I think it was snowing out or something along those lines, and we wanted to find something to do. So we went and found a um, play money sit and go thing on, I think it was Empire Poker back in the day. And we'd try to register so we could all get in the same one. And then we'd just play those. And we did that for a few days intermittently and then I convinced my parents to throw $50 online on my Paradise Poker account. And never looked back. Tom grabbing a few chips back. Sam is still in the lead. And you're talking Base before check. about showing those different lines early in a match. And it is Durr who's showing more Race, different sorts of lines so far, isn't it? Absolutely. You definitely get the sense that he's probing Sammy for weaknesses, trying to find a game plan here. He seems to like three-betting him a lot, and he's coming up with different ways to try to win those pots once he has. He's betting out a lot, sometimes he's check-raising, throwing in a check-fold every once in a while. And this, a hand that I believe huh? that Sammy would, has usually been sort of three betting with the ace on the big yeah. line. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. No, I did well, because it's important I to mix in some eyes. calls with an ace so that when nervous. you do call on a board comes like this, you know, you know, your opponent five can't five just automatically win because you never have top. Go show me. Huge later. Huge later. Huge later. Okay. 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 With the nine of clubs, too. <laughs> <laughs> and that hand, uh, there we go. Don't manage and got away with losing absolutely nothing. Kind of frustrates yeah. Sammy a little bit. Yeah, definitely. Showing him that he folded a pair there. Oh! And Sammy is the first oh. to collect the seven deuce bounty. Cool right, little 10 k over. So I mean, it, it, it is something that, uh, Roland Neal pointed out, which is that you usually so do sick. see this game played in a, in a ring game. I mean, you must have yeah. played it. I should know better than uh, yeah. play you in that game. Uh, <laughs> it makes a much bigger difference in a ring game. Zeeban. Because say there's Zeeban. a situation where uh -huh. I might re-raise no, with Zeeban's Zeeban's Jack no, or better, Ace oh, no, King, no, no, and a few bluffs to balance no, that out. Now bro. you add any in seven deuce there, and it really changes the situation. In a heads-up game, it's a very different effect because 
both players are playing such wide ranges to begin with, but adding in seven those matters a lot less. Pass myself 10 <laughs> I'm happy now, because if you do it, I'm good. It's only 10 Gs on the pass. So oh, I've no. got it here, yeah. stable. Look at Let's put that there. Looks That's like a seven deuce, seven money. deuce again. Can you imagine the seven deuce money goes more? <laughs> Deck. Oh, sick. You're going to up like 100,000 in it? You probably will do. So yeah, 100%. Hand. Check. Check. 5,000. Oh. And so, if you are Tom, you're actually you're computing that the oh. pot is 10k bigger than it actually is. Exactly. So this is a spot where ordinarily you might check behind for a little pot control with your medium strength hand, but check. now you just want to win it right away. You want to be sure to win this spot because you've got seven deuce. Same thing about this turn bet. Exactly. Yeah. One thousand three hundred. The pot 16 oh. for Sammy, Sorry. but it's 26 for Tom. Now, depending on what river card comes, there's going to be a lot of times when Tom wants to check this back, right? Yeah, yeah. I think he'll probably check it back on most cards. He might try to bluff on, say, a jack, an eight, or a six. But on this card, I'd expect him to check it back. The idea he cannot get Sammy to fold a better hand? Exactly, yeah. It doesn't make sense to bluff. It doesn't make sense to bet for value. Sammy's not going to call the force, and he's not going to fold better. He could bet... If he bet, it would be solely to try to get Sammy to fold another seven. Looks like Sammy's considering a bet here. Yes, um, it does. And is that what he should be thinking about? He's played this hand a little strangely. He's set himself up to be in a situation where he is going to have to try to bluff the river to win, because he's called the turn with only the straight draw. But at the same time, checking twice and then betting on that card, it's hard to see what he's representing there. I'd, I'd expect Tom to call him if... Sammy bets here. Right. I mean, if, if he had like ace, queen, queen, jack, just, you know, over cards, the big bet on the river is a little fishy because because Tom could have a nine here, right? Exactly. I mean, it's, so it has to be a straight or bluff or a, a flop full house. I mean, even a straight or a flop full house, it's still a strange way to play the hand. You'd think you'd raise some point. Though he has overbet to his credit here, which is something I had been noticing earlier. He was only doing it with strong hands. So if he's going to take such a weird line and try to get Tom to make a biggish fold, then yeah, overbetting is the way to do it. And what are you thinking right now if you're Durr? I'm, I'm confused. I'm thinking maybe Sammy has, had a flush draw on the flop, or I don't think I'm expecting him to have the hand he does. The, bear eight for the straight draw. It's a really strong call if he makes it, though, 66K. It certainly is. I don't have enough to shove, I guess. Oh, you're so sick. <laughs> and Sammy shows the bluff. Oh my god, bluff for the re-bluff. That seven deuce. I told you it's either going to lose us money or make us money. Huh? It's an unconventional line so Sammy took there, but you got to respect the guts. You sure. ship, I call. It did work out. You're a bit high. Yeah, that'll do. You're I'm joking. <laughs> the eight high wins, you have seven high. High up here. What? Sevens. Oh. 75K to the good. He's taken oh, everything. Durr's thrown at him and thrown it right back. Well, it's funny. Sammy actually has a reputation for being not quite the best poker player in the world, but from what I've played with him, which is a bit in the last month and a half, I think he plays pretty well. Um, he definitely has a reputation for being pretty bad at poker, but I don't think that I agree with that. Um, I think like that 8-5 bluff I, that he pulled was not something I expected him to do at all, and uh, he's definitely got some surprising plays up his sleeve, and so far I think he's played pretty good. Yeah, of course, things stop living. So obviously, heads up play all about making adjustments. Really? And well, after I, showing that, I just, I mean, is Tom going to adjust to Sammy starting now? I mean, obviously. I would think so, though. At the I same time, that goes back and forth. forth. Sammy knows he showed Tom that hand and knows Tom is going to be making those sorts of adjustments. So, Have you tried that Saki there with the. Um, bit of a mind game in that way. The, the what's it called? Let me see if I've got pieces on. Nope. Check. The. Like the sake with, with the cold one, bringing in the bamboo. Kind of really like cold. Just gave that really nice. Yeah, Do you know how many of them I've drank? Oh my days. <laughs> They're really tasty. They're very really sweet. I really like them. Gotta get the black cup with miso. Yes. Gotta get them 
in the lettuce wraps. Yes. Got to get course. the yellowtail jalapeno. Yeah, yeah, of course. Rock shrimp. Yeah. Uh, the Kobe new style. Yeah. Okay. So far, you're on what I want. Uh, lobster tacos. Done. Yep. Yep. The great thing about this Le Ambassador Casino is it is just across the street from one right. of the Nobus in London. So these guys yep. are already busy planning out their dinner break. Hey and this could be big action, times. couldn't it? Yeah, they've both got big hands. Could easily see it going four bets free flop. Cool. Why not the four bet, or why should Tom have four bet? I don't think he's making a mistake to just call there, but it certainly is a strong enough hand that he could consider it. Though, actually, come to think of it, Sammy has not been three betting quite as aggressively as Tom has, and maybe calling is the okay. more prudent play. Tom is not going to be crazy about playing a 200 big blind race. Okay. Yeah. With the two nines. There's a lot of potential for it to be worse than a race as well. And a very careful check on the flop from Tom. Obviously, it looks like Sammy has an ace. And Tom believes. Yes. Sammy Any 2 George is a well-known face on the poker circuit and a successful London businessman. I was actually born in um, born in Baghdad, but I'm but uh, we we came over to this country about 30 years ago. I grew up in North London. I love the place. It's my town, my manor. When I was at school, I was always I was always wanting to be centre of attention, you know, and I'd do anything to get that attention. The kids over there did take advantage. I was bullied quite a lot, actually. But yeah, believe it or not, I, I was. Um, I was then I, you know, I started playing up to the crowd to, to try and get them to like me and whatever. But uh, I was always, I was always uh, into business even when I was young. I mean, I remember there was one incident. A few of the lads from the sixth form went to um, Amsterdam. These kids, okay, these sixth formers, came back from Amsterdam and they sold me a pack of uh, de a deck of cards. Now this deck of cards wasn't your normal deck of cards. It was a deck of cards, but had certain pictures on those deck of cards. Well, I said, well, how much is it? And they turned around and they said to me, well, we'll give it to you for five pounds. So I thought about it and thought about it. I thought, well, hold on, there's 52 cards in the deck. You know, forget everything else. There's 52 cards in the deck, plus the actual box. Look, couldn't look nice. So let me sell each one for a pound. Within three days, I cleared out bar one card, and I got caught by the headmaster with that card. And and that was it, yeah. So from then I was always, I was always on the move, you know, looking, looking for certain angles. So far this pair are evenly matched, but is Durr about to step up the pace? I've just like spewed all over the, the set. Most people when they're talking in the middle of a hand are trying to pick something up on you. What a cooler. Join us after the break for more action. Back in the box with Isaac Haxton here at the Durr Million Dollar Challenge. And Sammy's feeling pretty good right now, isn't he? He sure seems to be. Right He's been yeah, yeah. getting the best of Tom. Is He's he? made a lot of good decisions Raise in big pots. That 8-5 bluff was... Looked like a weird play when he made it, but it was not what Tom expected. It worked out. Something like that. Tom. Three betting as per usual or often. And continuation bet here? Check. I don't know. Well, he seems to have checked. And he's done with it. Five. It's the sort of board that so never really misses there. the other player entirely. Because <laughs> at minimum, he has in. over cards. And I was actually saying that for all in there. Call in the the his smaller suited hands pretty regularly. You see, I fought pairs on that board a lot as well. Nice. Well, we can look at the stats so far. Obviously, Sammy with the big lead. What else do you see? Uh, the aggression's a little higher on Durr's side. Sammy's been getting to the river for the, for as the, the, no, with for Thomas like, the aggressor, and then making good decisions Daniel, once he gets there. It's not necessarily oh, bad. No, I, I didn't see the same and, and, then, and then I think... And if you were just to look that, at the stats we saw, someone else who won that, and then the what would you say to Tom uh, as far as the adjustments he should be making? Face to face. Yeah. No, I think in they general the three bet pots are going well. I don't. So three betting and playing aggressively, I think go down, but he should stick with that. I haven't seen it. But 
What, what is it for the first round that you got? Check. Um, Maybe play a little bit more cautiously. Check. I think it's... Um, he, he gets $20,000. You get like 20000 You You go 20, 40, and then you get up to like... You, if you want to keep playing the pros, do you know what I mean? It you seems like when the pots get million, past huh? the, the turn, to turn and river, Sammy's nearly always got the best hand? Is that? Yeah, it no, does seem three. that way. No, I think it's four. Two and a million is four. Does Two that maybe mean he's just thousand. getting better cards out there? Because I saw the guy, he like... Um, Certainly a factor. I mean, he did only like, played uh, 50 hands or so, so far. Called? So... I can't remember. Two reverse, right? Let me bet this on the turn, Possible. checked it on the river. He probably feels like he's got some showdown value here. Yeah, I would think so. On that sort of board, King High is not the weakest hand in the world. And he even has a pretty good King High. I shouldn't have let you go for the for the toilet break. Now, this is a spot for Tom. A lot of guys would check there. He's made no, the value sure it's bet. Four. It's yeah. four people. Okay. It's four people is what it is. I was actually worried that you might have registered it. It was, it was real. Why, did you have two pet? I'm concerned. <laughs> had nines. Hundred sixty-six thousand. I mean, Durham may even start thinking about reloading. So, uh, if it gets yeah, to be I a wonder. bigger. We up to call. Yeah, as I saw you put in, the I went to recreate again. Is <laughs> really want to go a back. lot out of position. He does play better with shorter stacks. So maybe he's actually happy to see the stacks get a little shorter. Okay. And lately, last Check. 20 or so hands, we've seen a preponderance of Dur 3 betting and then checking the flop. Yeah. It's He may have bet a lot of turns. Would you? Do you want to be betting this turn, and why or why not? I think it's a close decision. I think he is going to get called by ace high hands some here, so betting for value makes some sense. Additionally, if he checks and lets Sammy check back, every card in the deck's a little tough for him on the river. I'm so excited for Nobu. It's going to be amazing. You know what? Because I've been coming here all the time. I wish I could be sponsored by Nobu. Oh. Uh, because I've been coming all the time. Yeah, I've been eating, um, you know, you've been eating the food here, whatever. Like, I've done everything on the menu. Right, right. You know what I mean? The, the food here is pretty good, actually. Surprising. It's fantastic. It's Listen, really the good. food here is fantastic. Yeah. But it's like, I had it every day. Every day for like two weeks. It's mad. I could, I could reel you off the whole menu. <laughs> and it is just like poker players. They're playing for a million dollars, and yet, and I, I like this casino really, what they're going to eat for their next meal is at the forefront of their minds. I was surprised, yeah. actually, with the quality of a lot of the exactly London casinos that have been involved in pretty good. Oh, we've got another 7-day spot developing here. Up to 14,000 total. And it's 19,000 total. A big re-raise. That is a very big re-raise, yeah. I wonder what Tom's going to decide to do with the 8s here. It, it wouldn't be totally unreasonable to just straight up fold them. Yeah, what, what is Sammy's range here now? Is It's, it's very big hands and the 7-deuce. Yeah, you would think so. Um, which isn't an altogether bad plan. Have a sort of separate three betting game with the seven deuce and several very strong hands. Basically impossible for s Tom to call this bet. I would think so. I would think Sammy has a lot of ace kings. Ace queens big pairs in his range before the flop. Even if he's specifically the seven deuce, that hand has turned into a five outer against Tom. What does the bet so. size say to you? He's bet just over the pot. Well, it's continuing with the plan he sort of laid out for himself before the flop of making big bets and forcing Tom to guess, do I have seven two or do I have a monster? <coughs> And the call, rather than the raise and fold, or fold. Um, yeah. Yeah. Well, it sets up a spot on the turn now where Tom has, if the stacks haven't changed since we last looked at him too much, Tom has just about a pot size bet to play here. The question is, can Sammy okay. pull the trigger? He hasn't. Though he hasn't given up on the hand yet either, because if he had a set here, he might check that as well. If he has kings or queens something like that. 
he can still try again on the river when Tom checks back. I wouldn't be at all surprised to see Sammy jam it here. Is it the right play overall? It's hard to say. It very well could be. Tom Check. seems quite likely to have a hand very much like the one he does based on how he's played this. Maybe a little stronger. Maybe he has something like queen 10 a bit more often than he has eights. But I would expect him to bet the turn with a very strong hand. Oh. Tom is wondering if... I probably should bluff. Yeah, pair. that... Huh? I'll repair. He must win then. Yeah. Okay. Tom thinking that he may have had to bet there to get Sammy uh, off a queen, uh, a jack, 210, sure something like seven. that. Yeah I, yeah, I think Tom yeah. is thinking that Sammy might have a hand like ace-jack, jack-10 there. I was going to bet on the river. You can't call it on, I think. Uh, for some reason, I really thought you might have had 3-7. I still probably fold, but I don't know. Yeah, Sammy's second-guessing himself when he sees Tom's hand there, which, you know, isn't totally called for. So Tom's never going to have a much worse hand than that, really. Both players feeling like they played it a little weak, but Tom, Tom well, got the money, yeah. It's a tricky spot. Starting right away from Sammy's big overbet preflop, the pot was sort of destined to get tricky. 5,000? And this is something that Dwan doing a little more than Sam. He's sort of leading into the raise, the donk, right? Yeah, the donk bet. Uh -huh. Leading out of position when the other guy has had the lead on the previous street. Sammy's hit his worst possible card on the river. Yep. Cool. Say call. Yeah. Two pair. Can't blame Sammy for that at all. He's gonna see some bluffs, he's gonna see some value bets with weaker hands. If Tom has Queen 10, Queen 9, something like that, quite likely plays it exactly the same. Starting to go the other way just a little bit dur, not far from even. Yeah, that seven deuce versus eight spot was really big. I mean, me and Tom are very good friends, you know. It's not just this, this challenge thing, but we've, we've bonded very, very well. And, you know, we've, we've, we've gelled well, and I think, you know, it's, it's, I know the money's important, but a good friendship in this, in this industry is very good as well. And I respect him a lot for it, and I respect, I respect him for who he is and what he is. And, and you know, it's, it's a pleasure and a privilege to play, um, to play at the highest level with the best. Sammy's a very fun opponent. Um, especially when I'm catching cards all the time and winning money, obviously anyone's a funny, fun opponent then, but uh, Sammy's fun to be at the table with and he's a fun guy to hang out with even across the poker table, so uh, it's been interesting. Still very early in this match, but... He's up like five million this month. From what you know of Tom yeah. Duana, awesome. does it seem like he's on top of his game tonight? Yeah. One of the biggest winning ones He seems to be playing pretty well. He, um... He's won, uh... Up to 3, yeah, he's won, yeah. Cool. About that. And how much has he done back to that couple? He lost back 2.7 to Patrick, but then he's won 800 for Hillary, so. So it's like, you yeah, know, whatever. I Check believe two, I they're talking Check. about the fame. Yeah, they must be. Online player uh, who's sort of come in subways from nowhere and uh, won, uh, I, I don't know, 7, 8 million or so. Yeah, he, he's been on quite a run, quite a bit of that run straight through Tom. What do you make of Isildur's game? It seems like he's a very tough no-limit player, maybe not as tough a pot limit Omaha player. Up to One thing you definitely can say about him is that he is willing to play the, the biggest stakes possible the with one. absolutely anyone at any time. Any number of tables. Only since it's I knew been a lot of fun to watch. <laughs> so getting a lot of attention. A lot of people feel like he exposed sort of a flaw, maybe, in Tom's <laughs> No Limit game. I mean, <laughs> possibly. What what would that be? Has something to do with with sort of a, a passive defensive style of play that Tom sometimes employs? Yeah, a little bit, I think. I think even that now. Recently. The very best heads up no limit players have been playing an extremely Hello? aggressive style. Both from yeah, the big blind okay. and from the button. I'm a clip oh, right after the show. Okay, I'm I'm oh, I'm filming at the moment. Um can I call you back can I call you back tomorrow about this? Yeah? 
Okay, because I'm, I'm on TV at the moment while I'm talking to you. What? Yeah, okay. Yeah. <laughs> All right, well, uh, cheers, thanks, mate. Nine hours or something. All right. That was the bank manager who got to answer his phone calls. <laughs> <laughs> Sammy <laughs> taking business calls in the middle of the match. Because in this match so far, it does look like Tom, it feels like Tom's controlling the pace, if you know what I mean. Yeah, don't spoil it. so sick that 8-5 had. He just decided to, just decided to bluff the river, and I just happened to have the better yeah. hand, which was the 7 dude. Well, to be honest with you, I thought I was good there as well with the two. When you weren't calling, I thought maybe you had like an ace high. Yeah? I'm pretty sure I was bluffing that river, but I actually was thinking of checking it, the, uh, the queen 10, 9, 7. But if mm. we chop, I don't get the money, obviously. Yeah, that's right. So, and I thought it was really likely you had a 7. You know, like if I had 7, 8, I would have checked the river, definitely. Yeah. Because you have a 7 so much. Mm. But with 7, 2, so I was like, oh man, there's that extra 10,000 away. <laughs> Oh, it's crazy. That game has lost people a lot of money, and it's made them a lot of money. Yeah, yeah. That's seven dudes. It's a sweet game. Oh, yeah. so far a lovely tonight, game. Lovely game. It certainly has. It's uh, really been the driving force behind a couple of the biggest, most interesting pots they've played. Oh. I thought I was picking up, um... I want you to call. I want you to call. I thought I was picking up another chip. I'm not going to fold. Top pair versus bottom pair. And there was a check call. Don't go to zone mode. Like we're talking, and you're going to zone mode. It's ridiculous. That's when the pot gets to a certain size. Try. All right, I'll try, I'll try not to, just for this match, though. You're going to zone mode. It's ridiculous. Like, oh my god. Check. And that's check with the intention. 10,000. Making a tough decision based with a bet. Right. Um, it's an overcard that's more likely to hit Sammy than it is. Durr, so that check also it. makes it a good card for him to block. Win. He could play, you know, queen oh, seven man. or something like that, like this. He could play king right. ten like this also. Um, I'll just throw the cards in the muck. It's okay. There you go. Good news. He did make it conspicuously small. Because the two was still there, good there either way. Something like ten and twenty-six. So Sammy's really been mixing it up with his bet sizing. We've seen him under bet. We've seen him over bet. You know, I'm sorry. I'm just and used to. Because most people, when they're talking in the middle of a hand, are trying to pick something up on you. So that's you know what I'm saying. Like oh, usually, yeah. when people are like being front, you're actually not. So I <laughs> <laughs> you're like going to zone, but like yeah, what's the name? Erica was telling me you um, like when you guys bet, like you're laughing loud, then you go into zoom. It's like it's crazy. I think Tom's right about that. Thank Sammy you, seems to just talk just for the sake of conversation, doesn't he? I yeah. mean, I think it's definitely better to do that than to do to to mix the two, you know what I mean? Like, you never want to be giving the impersonation that you're... Yeah, like me, I don't do that stuff. <laughs> right, 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 you don't do it at all. Yeah. But I'm saying, like, you can't be too bothered knowing that, okay, now I'm, you know, trying to win your money, like, when I do that or whatever. Yeah, it's true. But it's bad when people, like, are talking to me unfriendly and, I don't know. I, I just don't like the hustling aspect. I try to avoid that. You've played me now long enough to know that it's me. <laughs> that's the thing, that's me. I don't, like, when I zone, not zone, rezone, whatever zone it is. <laughs> but at the same time, as you said, it does seem like Sammy is. Okay. His con it's not the lines he's taking, but the bet sizing, and he's, uh, he's sowing some seeds of confusion, oh, the movie. isn't he? Did you watch Absolutely. it? Yeah. yeah. Oh, the movie's great, huh? Yeah, I like the movie. The movie's more. fantastic. I like the yeah, movie. Yeah, Sammy's. I think the movie's great. Sort of trying to. Uh, okay, I'll check. I'll feel off the car. like he's just fooling around. The boss is great, too, or just the Doesn't really care too much what happens, but you can tell he's a competitive guy. He wants to win. All right, I'll check. So, all right. I'll Even in his conversation, that has to be in the back of his mind. Let's see what the right bet is. Twenty-two and a half thousand. So right bet. Right bet. Sammy adds a little bit to his lead there over Durr. Now look at the stats, Isaac. Durr's 9% three bet here stands out to me. When the screen popped up, I was expecting to see a higher number there. Because so many of the big and interesting pots have been pots where Durr is three bet. Right, and what he's just not doing is he's not playing out of position without being the aggressor. So. Exactly. These boys are suited and booted, and Sammy George has brought a very expensive accessory to the table. Oh, yes, I've got to mention my, my, my watch over it's here. It's a 200K watch? Yes. 
Yeah, there you go. That's a good pot. He goes, that's the worst case scenario. <laughs> if all the money goes in. <laughs> and I need to go on collateral. As time ticks on, find out if Sammy can keep hold of his watch after a break. The full tilt poker dollar million dollar challenge. Move. Swimming on nice. Yeah, yeah. Oh, okay. right, no, no, no. no. In fact, I'm yeah, saving What are you doing about? Even oh. now? Yeah. In fact, it's good news. <laughs> because she oh. wants her watch done. So I told her to go see, like, when, when you guys arrive, to go meet him and give it to him. I've already spoken to him. So he's going to sort it for you. At least I'll make her, like, happy yep. ish. Sammy oh, what I mean? 11,000 Wow. Oh, and he just leads right out with a almost double pop bet. Is that an indication that Sammy is uh, not oh, happy enough from that position, or is that just one of those things? I don't know. I mean, Tom didn't have a huge hand oh. on the flop there. He has a lot more hands he'd rather Over continue with than ace queen. So. I don't know. Is it Earlier split? in the match, I'd been saying that Sammy seemed to just be overbetting whenever he got Are a huge going, hand. No, but then there was that 8-5 yeah, pot here. where he made that really gutsy yeah, overbet with nothing on the, table, it's on be the good. river. And it makes me think like he's actually putting Tom to tough decisions with his overbets. And Tom just didn't really have enough of a hand to continue there. Going Is it sort of a mirage? I mean, you feel like people think, oh, heads up. You actually have to play a lot with nothing. But... Is, is that so only true as far as that? hands you open with? I have liked it a lot. No, I, I, I think cool. that continues to be smash. true on every smash street. Awesome. It, I, you know the bit, the bit... Um, if in any spot your opponent can cool? just the bet that, and win uh, the pot half the time, they have a really easy and profitable like. bet. And you have to be conscious of when he not sticks up for his friend. opportunities like that. I'll just make a 3,000 dark. Yep. He's made it three. three <laughs> so this is now a blind okay. bet by Tom Dwan. <laughs> yep. Oh, I was really hoping you'd fold. It's not as loose as down, you think. He's raising 80% of the yeah, hands yeah, anyway from that spot. So yeah, good. exactly. And how do you now. like that percentage, 80%? It's all right. I think it's a little on the low side. I'd probably be playing a few more if I were him. Oh, you really like what you must have seen. Oh. That much. Oh, I'll let you do your zone thing now. I'll leave you to it. Lead out by Sammy, call by Tom. How now? Check. Check. I would expect Tom's going to check back here usually. I hope to get the showdown and win. Check. Uh, check. Check. I have a five. With an eight. Good. Sort of the medium strength hands, the toughest yeah. to play, aren't they? Yeah, a lot of the time. Tom just pissed Sammy there. Obviously, when my wife comes, uh, that she's got to sit there, obviously. <laughs> Going to. I've never met your wife. Huh? I've never met your wife. Yeah, but she never comes poker and she hates poker. She does? Hates poker. Like, hates it with a passion. <laughs> Sammy was telling, uh, like properly with the fashion. Was earlier that he's up to three thousand. They, uh, most of his family don't really approve of gambling, but he's okay. doing so well. Obviously, they're all supporting him in this match. Very successful businessman, Sammy, and he's okay. obviously been very successful okay. since his entrance into the poker world. there a reason for Tom to continue here? I think there is. Uh, Ace high has a reasonable chance of being the best hand. And on top of that, he uh, has the gut shot from the wheel that will I'll let you know. very nearly well, all. Whatever you're planning to and do, an ace will all it was going to go over the top. <laughs> it was I already said it. I said, if he has it, good luck to him. If he doesn't, cool. And taking into account what Sammy actually had, Tom clearly made the best play. But th there's something to think it's about there with Ace America, three, for sure. like 10 times a day. To sign up to like this hotel thing. It's driving me mad. I keep telling please don't call me there's, anymore. There's so many spam phone call things. Going it's on. kidding me, man. They're wanting my credit so card number. 1, you know, there's like a do not call list in the US that 
maybe maybe you could be on. I don't know if you could. His body you language see right now, Sammy, it just like seems like he's he's looking probably. around. All of a sudden, he's been a bit distracted works, from the game. Right. Hmm. I don't even think I'm on. I think he may have know. just lost that. I must not be because I call my phone so much. I don't know. Sure. I don't know. That's a good idea. I do not call. Uh, very good. And I mean, those currents yeah, I mean, are so important. Should, should there be kind of pushing things a little bit right now, no, maybe? No. It's just too easy to well, build a program. It's almost purely a psychological yeah, thing. So he has to make a decision about yeah, what he thinks Sammy is thinking. And in terms of the you know technical dynamics of the play, going from Sammy has 260,000 oh. or has 240 to the reverse oh. doesn't really impact how they should be playing. But psychologically, it can make a world of difference. Do you think Sammy's sort of more likely to kind of clam up a little bit then? Kind of get maybe closer to even or maybe, maybe, or maybe, or maybe get more like aggressive. It, it can be really it's hard to predict. It's a 00461. Oh, so that's a London number, right? I don't know, but it's 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 like a US... Um, maybe it's Canada? It's like it's, it's, it's Canada. Huh? Or maybe it's just the zip and... There's not zero zero one zero zero four six one. Oh. Suited ace. Oh. But I mean, they can't be efficient telemarketing, right? Because it costs so, like thirty seconds. Or it's, 30 it's kidding me. But I tell you, I think it's like what's going on in America. A few times where Dur's going to peel off a flop, know, just for call of the big um, blind. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Well, he's I mostly been holding a re-raise, but here he goes for a call. It's just annoying. Uh, two, three, four. Check. Check. Oh, and I think he I'm makes it straight. So you have to bet this on Six. the river now? Oh, close. If you're Tom, or... Think It'd about be interesting to try going for a check raise also, actually. Oh, he has to be, be likely city. to, if he hit the 8, try and bet that for value. Hey, how are you? Yeah. Yeah. Maybe he's just checked back with an ace high several times, and now he's gonna... No. Oh, Tom bet triple the pot there. That's <laughs> the money. Greedy. Greedy, yeah. I wonder if he's just... He's Three hours is going pretty quick. Trying to make Sammy well, feel like with he's you, bullying him. I'm with Sammy you. needs to take a stand. It's not like Sammy's going to often have a strong hand there. So he's betting triple the pot and hoping to get called by ace high or bottom pair or something like that. What up? Plays up to 3,000. Alright. Oh. Yeah, boy, I'm having so much fun. <laughs> I'm so sick of the head. We're evens now, and I want to go till six. Check. Check. Oh, like in this kind of spot, five. because Durr's got nothing, aren't you more oh, likely to make a continuation a bet so when you've got you. such 100%. a bad hand? Check. Yeah, but so at the same time, you can't do it every single time you've got there you nothing. Go. Now you've got two pairs six four. Then on a board like that, then you're just not making a strong hand on all that often. Most five, of your bets five. will be with bad hands if you bet every time you flop two worthless cards between a three and a jack. Well, this has come out just perfect, straight raise on the river and the raise. So six more. Should get the money. Eight thousand five hundred more. Ah. Yeah. Okay, let's get back to that mode, mode. And Sammy now going for the sort of countdown of the chips. He does, I think, as you said, he's actually getting a little impatient and maybe a little more aggressive trying to get back even. Yeah, it, it does look that way. He, he's looking a little restless. Wait up he jumped off to a big lead oh. early. It's got to be a little frustrating to be starting to give it back. Juan has such a great sort of presence at the table as far as the live game goes. It's very hard to get any sort of read about... I don't know what's going through his head. Yeah, he's okay. sort of inscrutable like that. Is that something that you practice as well? Just kind of doing the same thing every time? Sure. Definitely, yeah. Um, You're thinking about bluffing there? Sure. Representing all of all them draws on the board? <laughs> be a believable one. Also, good spot for Sammy really? here now that he's... Why would you go and do that? Top pair on the end. Tom's so likely to have ace or king oh, high the way he's played this. Why can't I just keep my mouth shut? See, that's why I don't talk during poker. Why? Because now I, I have a decision to make. Because I went over Yet another over bet too. I, I didn't notice that the river. immediately. 
just, I'm just pretty sure it was a five. I was hoping it was a six all along, but... This feels like a good spot for it with Tom having checked back twice. He You'll really isn't going to have better than Ace or King High I, very often at all. Even, even Ace High is not going to have that often. He'd be likely to bet that on the turn. Falling. Didn't show it. A few more chips oh. there. Sammy George. Let's have a look at the stats. And all of a sudden, Tom's opened up sort of a gap in how many hands he's winning. You look I mean, it should be 50 50. Yeah, exactly. The heads up is an evenly balanced game. It should be going 50 50. In heads up play, sort of is the edge on those small pots where no one's got anything? I mean, is a 55% to 44, is that decisive? Well, it's over so few hands that, to a significant extent, it could just represent Tom Gang dealt the best hand more often. But if you play 10,000 hands and you're winning 55% of them, it's extremely likely that you're the person who's winning money in that matchup. Do you feel like heads up sort of over the long haul, the results come down to how you play big pots or how you grind away the small? I think that in the long run, the, the small pots actually end up mattering more, though it, it's sort of situationally dependent, and in certain matchups it can be the reverse. If somebody is playing really poorly in the very big pots, somebody's playing in such a way that, you know, they get to win more small pots because they just refuse to give up in the big pots, and once it gets over ten big blinds, the rest are just going in, then they might win more than half the hands and still be the underdog in the matchup. But in general, I think that it does come down to who is picking up the small pots. Sort of every opponent is different. Every matchup is different. Absolutely. Balloons. There are a lot of different ways to win in Heads Up No Limit. Check. 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 I have the feeling that Tom's sort of strategy here please, is please. sort of overall in this match has been sort of playing tricky and and sort of letting things happen early on, trying to get in good situations when the big pots happen, or? It does seem that way, yeah. Though, th there's definitely been a component of uh, trying to win the smaller medium pots, too. Like we were talking about earlier, Sammy's made the nut flush now. Twenty thousand. again. Standards. And once again, Tom no. quickly folds. He does not seem to be giving Sammy much credit for making a lot of river bluffs. But like I was saying earlier, a definite part of Tom's strategy, at least early on, had seemed to be setting up those pots where he three bets and continuation so bets to pick up rejuvenate ten or eleven big blinds. Yesterday you look like literally your eyes were popping out of your head. I forget like you know how awesome the standard day-to-day -day feeling of life is. Come on, buddy. Three Serious puck. <laughs> How awesome it is thousand. to find the aces. Three raise. Up to 30,000 total. First four bet of the match from Tom. Yeah. That we've seen. Yeah, and he's got aces. <laughs> and he's picked a good time to do it, too. Sammy almost can't help but lose a lot of money here. I mean, this this obviously a cooler, but is it an automatic re-raise here for Sammy? Is oh, but if you're going to re-raise anything here, you're going to re-raise ace-king. There's maybe an argument to be made for just calling the four bet with all the hands you want to continue with. But if you're going to be five betting anything, you should probably be five betting ace-king. 113,000 total. And that's about half of effective stacks. He's pretty much effectively moved all in. He's not going to fold if Tom shoves. I'm all in. Cool. Yeah, he calls immediately. Yeah, he's oh. He knew he'd commended himself there. And you can't blame him. Getting 250 big blinds in with Ace King is really pretty standard in a heads up match. Nice hand. Just horrible luck to have run into Aces here. It's a complete cooler, and this is the first, going to be the first huge swing of the match. King There's King? 486,000 in this pot, and unless they run out of chop. Oh, spades, <laughs> but no. Eight nine? That's what Emmy's asking uh, for. It's four almost there. Four, four nine. Eight outs to chop? God, he almost. 
kind of pull for it for all things to be even, huh? So close. Mm. Got a feel for Sammy. Oh. Here, there's nothing he can do. Oh, how painful. And, I mean, you have to take a long view here, but when you're playing no limit hold them, things like this, they never yeah, even out, do they? Uh, no, not really. Yeah, I mean, not in one lifetime. I mean, we started with 250s on our 257. Yeah. Yeah, especially. 257. Yeah, it should be tall. It's not like you're playing 500 yeah, more giving out heads 250. up all day, every day. Oh, of course. And after a real back and forth battle so here, Aces, Sammy is stuck 250k oh. on. What a cooler. Brutal cooler. I mean, Aces versus Ace King. Could it have gone another way? I don't think it can go another way once Sammy decides to make the fourth bet up before the flop. I think that that's, uh, once he decides he's not just gonna call the 30, he's gonna raise again, then there's no getting away from it. He's put half his stack in, and even if Tom has kings, he's still got the odds to call when Tom goes all in because he's getting three to one and he's only a three to one underdog. It's only if Tom happened to have two aces. You know, if he has queens, it's 50-50. If he showed up with ace queen or, you know, he's a favorite, Sammy. So he has to call. Once the action goes, it's just a huge call in. It's really unfortunate. If it goes the other way around, we'd see a different game. But now I feel the worst for Sam. Yeah, I mean, the, the only, the, this is a question here. Sam, Sammy actually came up to me straight after the pot and said, how can I get away from this? And uh, I, I think the only answer is don't make it 120,000. You know, once he's done that, he's, he's got to put the rest of his money in. Uh, I guess if he, when it's 30 and it's back to him, if he sort of does something a bit defensive and sort of makes it 77 or something, see how Tom reacts, have a think about it. Now he can just about make an excuse to fold. But that's pretty weak poker, and weak poker doesn't really cut it heads up. Ace King's a big hand. I think he's got to he's got to put the pressure on. And once he's there, he knows it doesn't look good for him. But three to one, it's you can't throw it away. I also think that Sammy wants to get involved in a coin flip situation against Tom. He knows Tom is a better player. And if Tom has queens or, or, or jacks, it's, it's a definite spot that he's been looking for. So, you know, you don't want to make it 77 and then fold against your great chance to win a 50-50. So, all in all, I think that in this situation, there's just no way that Sammy should fold or could fold. Right, I mean, Dwan's not getting 250 big blinds in before the flop with ace-king. But Sammy should be looking to. Well, I think Tom is perfectly capable of getting it in with uh, queens before the flop for 250. You know, maybe, maybe even Ace King. It's hard to see Tom turn over. If you're, if you're Sammy and you've put the 120 and, and now Tom says the words all in, you know you're not looking at Ace Queen here. You're never looking at Ace Queen. You're not looking at Jacks or Tens very often. It is going to be one of the big four hands. But it could be Ace King, you know, so it could be Ace King, Ace King. He can't fold. It's just one of those situations. And he is stuck on Moonga. I mean, there's not really much you can do with that ace-king there. Uh, versus some people, maybe you wouldn't get in that many big blinds, but versus me, I think you're supposed to just about every time there, because I play pretty aggressively pre-flop. Um, so I don't think he has much choice other than to get all the money in there. Just I'd play two queens the same way every time, and I'd play, you know, ace-eight suited that way some of the time. Um, so I, I think he has no choice but to get all the money in there and just Hope it works out, and for him it didn't that time, and for me it did. As it went, he had aces and I had ace king. It's it's something pre-flop a lot of heads up players can't get away from, you know. With the, with you know, I, I didn't leave myself much fold equity anyway, so what can I do? You know, it went in and that was it. There is still plenty of action to come from this challenge. Does Sandy get on the defensive? I didn't feed it. Will hunger prevail? I can eat a cow. The game reaches a critical point for Sammy and E2 after the break. When we get up and say goodbye, then it's bad news. Did you know if I had 500K, I wouldn't get it. Back to the full tilt poker dur million dollar challenge. And wow, wow, really wow, really wow Isaac. I mean, yeah, what do you tell yourself if you're Sammy? What will he yeah, tell himself? What you should tell yourself oh, is the around, there was I nothing I could do. I had yeah, Ace King, he had I, Aces. That would but <laughs> after such a big pot, it, I wish I had the it's hearts, really you know? tempting that to beat no, yourself I'm, up, I'm look for ways it could have gone differently, that reasons that you shouldn't know he had that. Aces. Are you a firm believer in it's not the big pot, it's how you play oh. after the big pot, or is that just what they say? I mean... The big pot makes a pretty big difference. <laughs> he's got some work to do to make up for that. But 
it's certainly up to him whether it goes downhill from here or not. Good little comebacker for Sammy here. The, the yeah, wasn't it's a enough. pretty scary board, though. I, I think he'd rather not hit that card, so he's more likely to get another like bet in from Tom. Two to three minutes before trying to bluff you after uh, that hand. And yet again, Tom <laughs> makes a fold on the I river. I think three minutes is enough, but to do it Sammy in the first three minutes for can't be a good Tom idea. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That would really tilt me even more. I'm not sure Tom's called a river bet from Sammy yet. It's a, it's a very uh, interesting point. I Not that I can recall. Um, what else do you see in these stats as, as they're evolving? They're actually holding pretty steady relative to the last couple times the screen's popped up. Uh, Tom continues to be the more aggressive player with the number in the low 80s to Sammy's number in round 65. That uh, Tom has won 42 pots pre-flop. Sammy's only won 27. Does that sort of mean that Sammy is sort of just giving up in the big blind more often? or the just? I think the single biggest thing that indicates is that Sammy's folding his button right off more often. Right. And, uh, this has gone check, check on the flop. Durr now. Very nice turn card. I mean, if you're Sammy, do you feel like, yeah, you feel like the 7 or 10 could have been good if you got that, or it just doesn't Almost matter? Almost since you thought so long over 6,000. I think I would often I smell, take you know, a stab there in Sammy's spot. Myself, He's got he enough shot, either at the pair outs is pretty likely to be live. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I wonder if he picked something up on Tom, yeah. either just from and you did hit a three. his tendencies oh, or from something physical he saw there. It, he, did a good job getting away from what could have been a spot where I probably would have lost a bet, if not two. I mean, Durr is a guy who is considered such a good technical player. Yeah. What do you think, as far as him playing live, what do you think adjustments he's making sort of for tells and that sort of thing as far as watching Sammy? I wonder. Um, you know, how do you find it with yourself, someone who really started playing on the Internet as well? I've definitely had to make a very conscious effort to not Five give things away when I play live. I have started only in the past year or so to get in the habit of playing very methodically, taking the same amount of time on all my actions, trying to make my movements as mechanical as I can. And Tom's pretty good about that too. He takes his time, though he, he always tends to act pretty quickly. and. This has been an interesting pot. Durr bet the flop. Sammy led the turn. Kings. No. No. And it probably the 10, the worst card in the deck for Sammy. Do wonder if he was preparing to bluff the river. Quite possibly. I wonder. He did something s there that was sort of similar to what he did in the 8 5 hand, where he called on the flop, and in the 8-5 hand, he called again on the turn, and then bet the river when it became clear that was the only way he was going to win. He did a similar thing here, where he check-called with a flush draw on the flop, and then bet the turn, because he didn't want to have to either check-call or check-fold. And I wonder if he's going to be doing that with strong hands to balance that out, or if that's a betting pattern that Tom is going to be able to pick up on and pick off some bluffs in those spots. And that's that's really the killer in heads up. Any tendency that you repeat, yeah, that you repeat and that you don't balance. Because if he does that also with, you know, ace ten from time to time, it becomes very difficult for Tom to play against that on the turn. But if it's always a flush draw, sort of have to have this inner clock in your head about how often you do certain things. Absolutely. It's very tough, isn't it? Yeah. Durr, who's flop top pair. 5,000. He's I guess, pretty confident he's ahead here. Yeah, I would think so. Uh, he's bound to be a little worried, if anything, that he might be behind uh, trip threes. 
It'd be pretty plausible for Sammy to have flopped triple threes and checked back. Though there was also a hand earlier in the match where Sammy had flopped top pair with King Queen on a King 3 2 board or something like that and checked it back. So Sammy is capable of checking back with a strong top pair or something that would be ahead on that turn. 3,000. Goes up to 3,000. Up to and Sammy now with the re-raise. Like oh, you didn't look. Hello. I call. Call. I don't think we've seen Durr fold to the three bet yet. No, I don't suppose we have. Like in um, in Omaha, players never do, but in Holden they do sometimes. This might Definitely. be one of the Sorry. kind of hands you wouldn't be like thrilled about calling with or at least it's suited it's suited <laughs> it's got one big card it's got some things going for it what now 26,000 flush draw probably just call you don't want to raise and let Sammy re-raise you and then you can't call it off for your 250 big blind stack but you're folding a hand with a lot of value And the idea being that you call here, not just because of the odds of the pop, but because of how much you're going to get if you hit the flush sort of thing, how deep Absolutely. he is. And at the same time, he also might get to win the pot without improving. Say, okay. say Sammy has something like ace-king here, and the turn comes an eight or a seven or whatever, and then he check holds. This pot now big, and if it doesn't come the club, it hasn't. Is Tom now have to be prepared to give this up? Well, he's picked up a pair as well, so he has a lot of equity, even against an over pair here. And with a hand like ace-king or ace-queen picking up a gut shot on that card, you can expect Sammy to be semi-bluffing fairly often, so Tom can't even be completely certain that he doesn't have the best hand here if Sammy bets. <laughs> Sammy checked it. Interesting. I wonder if Tom will bet or not. If he does bet, he has to be prepared to call a shove, so... I wonder why Sammy did check. Oh yeah, yeah. I can only assume Sammy was going for the check raise there. The stack to pot ratio is such that that would work out well. Tom bets 50 and Sammy moves in for 220 or whatever it is. I don't hate his turn check at all. Feels like a pretty scary bet because. That nine of clubs on the river, I mean, Tom could easily have played a nine like this as well. Possibly. I think he bets it on the turn a lot of the time. I think Sammy thinks he bets it on the turn a lot of the time. Or he'd be a little more reluctant to bet on that card. And I have to imagine Tom's going to move in here. Or at least make a big raise. Wow, Sammy gets the ace-king against the aces, and now the kings... Against a flush. Yeah. Come on. Yep. All in. And that's pretty much the story. The big sigh. I mean, it's painful. This is a tough spot. This is a very tough spot. Tom could be doing this as a bluff with something like pocket sevens or eights, something like ace high. A definite consideration here is Tom has something like ace-queen with the ace of clubs, so he knows that Sammy can't have the nuts and moves in on a bluff. There's no street where I'd be confident Tom would do anything other than what he has with a hand like ace-queen with the ace of clubs. Yeah, I mean, you know, you can say to yourself if you're Durr that Sammy probably doesn't have three nines because of the three bet and that sort of thing. I mean, it's not a bad spot try and bluff, is it? No, yeah. it's really not. Sammy very often has something exactly like what he has. And even if he has three nines, he's got to think about holding it. Tom's representing a flush here. Right now, he's wishing he didn't bet, that's for sure. Yeah, yeah. It's a lot more comfortable to just check and call one pot-sized bet here than it is to face the show. And so soon after he lost that other huge pot. The amount of money involved is bound to be getting to him here. Getting stacked two hands nearly back to back is 
not much fun. I wonder what it's going to come down to. And then at the same time, he might be thinking, Tom is thinking he doesn't want to get stacked Shame twice in a row. It's a good pass. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that, that's a good lay down. And Durr does not show it that time. He'll keep Sammy thinking, because that's going to keep him uneasy. Yeah, he can tell Sammy's a little yeah, uncomfortable I'm right now. Last thing he wants to after. do is to make him huh? feel good. I'll tell you after. What's up, her? Could you BB me it? I'll tell you after, like after the... I didn't know you could tell me at Nova. Uh, you can tell me over there, otherwise that's not going to go right. down. All right, fair enough. Was it a good fold? That's what I need to know. I'll tell you, I don't know. Multi-millionaire Tom Dwan is one of the world's most respected high-stakes players. The launch of the Million Dollar Challenge puts his money and his reputation on the line. At the start of uh, 2009, I was worried there wouldn't be quite enough games online. Um, it seemed like games were starting to die down a little bit. So I came up with the, the bet that I've offered people, which is I put up a million and a half dollars to their 500K, and we play 50,000 hands of their choice, either Nolan Hold'em or PLO, at 200, 400 or higher. And at the end, if they're up a dollar, they win 1.5 million. And if I'm up a dollar, they owe me 500,000. We came out with the live Heads Up series. So far, I've had three takers that I'm playing in London, and then we'll probably be doing one in the US soon and somewhere in Asia after that. There's not live Heads Up matches too often, and I think they're more interesting to watch a Heads Up match than a ring game. A ring game, too often you're gonna have people waiting for good hands or good hand versus good hand. A Heads Up match, you're gonna have people trying to steal every pot and you know an opponent trying to think, Ooh, does he, does he finally have a hand this time, or is he trying to steal every pot again? Um, and I think it'll make for more interesting TV and a better show. There is no amount so great that it can't be lost in a night. A forest can easily become a toothpick. And when Tom Dwan pushes, you have to push back. Join us the next time the Full Tilt Poker Durr Million Dollar Challenge continues. Next time, when this heads-up clash continues, Sammy Any2 strives to beat the formidable Tom Dwan, but can he pull it back and please the home crowd? There is plenty more action to come. I don't play this hand even when I feel it. I get enough. I think it'd be an awesome, awesome game. Sometimes I forget there's people watching. <laughs>